Welcome everybody. I'm Robert with Amazon Web Services, and I'm here to talk to you about Amazon LightSail, the easiest way to get started on AWS. Here's our agenda for today. We're going to cover the background of the LightSail product. Why did we build it? Who did we build it for? We're going to talk about some of the most popular workloads that customers run on LightSail. And then I'm going to take you into a deep dive with two demos of two of our most exciting features that we launched over the last year. Now, in order to understand LightSail as a product, we have to go back in time a little bit and understand more generally the AWS Compute Platform. The AWS Compute Platform has over 350 different instance types because we have customers that span every imaginable industry and every business segment at every size. And we need to have custom tailored solutions for all varieties of workloads. But having that kind of a, of, of a compute platform has a trade-off, which is that when you have somebody who's new to cloud computing, who's just getting started, this might seem complicated. People don't know which workloads to reach out to, what's gonna solve their problem in the most effective and the most efficient way. And that was really the genesis of LightSail. We wanted to build a product that makes it extremely easy for customers to get started in the cloud. And as with all of our products, we really went to the user feedback to understand what a product like this needs to look like. And we learned a few things early on. Not only do we have to have on-demand capacity, but that capacity needs to be deployable in minutes. So within minutes of realizing that you need a virtual machine, we need to be able to provision one for you. We need to have really intelligent defaults. Um, and sometimes that includes really fast CPUs, fast memory, flash storage. And we learned that customers who are just starting off, they want predictability. They value predictability over micro cost optimizations. So it made a lot of sense to bundle all of this together for our customers. And then of course, a lot of customers need to have the assurance that as their service or as their project scales, they're running on infrastructure that can grow with them. That there's a story that they can follow in order to take their business to the next level. And then as we went through this process, we learned that there are a lot of other affordances, such as DNS zone management, such as static IPs, such as CDNs, that are just very important. They're, they're, they're the things that customers reach for right after they outgrow a virtual private server. And not surprisingly, that takes us to the set of features that we see in light sale. We have low predictable upfront pricing, we have a number of blueprints that customers can use to launch popular application stacks like Ghost and CRMs and Django with the click of a button. We have managed databases. We have Postgres and MySQL that we can run at a variety of different scales and availabilities. And then we have a lot of those affordances that I mentioned, uh, networking affordances that take your application to the next level, help you reduce latency, help improve performance. And all of these come in a really simple UI that has out-of-the-box monitoring, SSH access, uh, SSL certificates, load balancing. And I know that it's hard to kind of take all this features, these features and say, well, you know, how exactly do these combine to create a really streamlined customer experience? And that's one of the big takeaways that I want you to have from this talk is just how simple everything is on LightSail. Simplicity is really one of the key benefits of LightSail. It's one of the key ways that we equip customers with the confidence to succeed in the cloud. I mentioned pricing, and here is a screenshot of the LightSail console, and you can see that we offer instant sizes of, across a variety of price ranges, and this list goes on to the right, but not too much further, actually. Our largest instant size costs $160 a month, and that gives you eight vCPUs. So it's pretty big, and you can also see that each of these instances has uh, not only a fixed amount of memory, CPU, and flash storage, but also generous data transfer included. For example, the three and a half dollar instance includes a terabyte of monthly data transfer allowance. That's all bundled in. 
And as you move up, you can see that the, the prices are very fair. Um, and we think what, what these instances do is really help the customer get over the hump of, oh, which instance type do I need? What if I need this? What if I need? It's, it just simplifies the selection process while still giving the right amount of flexibility for customers. In this screenshot, we see the blueprints that I mentioned a little bit ago. And with blueprints, you can choose your operating system, and then you choose your application, and then you click Launch. And within minutes, you're up and running with an Nginx instance, Node.js, Drupal, whatever you need. I mentioned databases. Here we go with uh, the ability to choose MySQL or Postgres. And then on the right-hand side of the screenshot, you can see that we can even choose high availability. And high availability is really interesting. This is uh, what this means is that we will deploy a cluster to run your database. And we will make sure that this database cluster spans multiple availability zones. And what this means is that your database will have much higher availability because each of our availability zones within a region are separated by a, a few kilometers um, uh, in some cases. Uh, and what they have is they're close enough to each other where we have sufficient networking and fiber running between them to do things like synchronous replication for your database cluster, but yet the latency is so low that, uh, and the distance is far enough where we can lose one of our availability zones without losing availability for the cluster overall. So this is a, a tried and true technique for making sure that your database has the availability that it needs so your application doesn't go down. And then of course you can see that you can choose a variety of different instance sizes on which to run your database. We have a set of really useful tools in the networking category. And I wanna go over each of these really quickly with you. The first thing we have is a DNS zone. And a DNS zone is a place where you can specify all of your DNS records. I wanna be 100% clear, LightSail does not currently support the ability to register a domain. You would register your domain in something like Route 53 or GoDaddy, and then you would point the name servers to the DNS zone that you build within LightSail. And the benefit of doing this is now you can integrate the DNS zone records with your CDN, with your certificate generator, with your load balancer. There's a lot of things that can kind of save you time and energy and prevent errors from happening. So we have DNS zones. Then closely related to DNS zones is the concept of a static IP address. And this is really handy because one of the first records people often set in their DNS zones is an A record or an address record to resolve something like dub 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 or the root record to some IP address. But the problem is that when you resolve that record to an IP address for a virtual private server, that virtual private server might go down. And if it comes back up, it might not have the same IP address, in which case you have an outdated DNS record and your application won't work. And to solve that problem, we have a concept called a static IP address. And what a static IP address is, it sounds exactly like what it is. It's a fixed IP address that you can attach to your virtual private server. And then instead of pointing the A record to your virtual private server, you point it to the static IP address. And you can move the static IP address between different virtual private servers as, as suits your needs. And that prevents a whole class of DNS issues. And then slightly more advanced features like, like CDN and load balancing. So first off, load balancers. And what this can do is basically, uh, it's a pattern that allows your application to scale horizontally. You can basically direct traffic from a static IP address to not one instance, but a fleet of instances. And you can scale these out. You can clone more instances and then the most simple load balancing algorithm, for example, is called round robin. The load balancer will just choose one instance after another to route traffic to. And then with the CDN, we have the ability to cache static web content closer to your users than the origin server. And this, of course, has two key benefits. The first is better for performance when users are loading your web page. And the second is that it reduces load on your backend. And in fact, in the cases where you have a purely static website, your backend might even go down and customers won't notice. Now, all of these features are great, but the really cool thing about this is this runs on the exact same infrastructure that powers EC2. And it runs on the exact same network that powers EC2, the Amazon Global Network. So for example, our CDN is powered by the same global network of edge locations and points of presence. And this is extremely significant. The Amazon Global Network is an extensive network that we've been investing in for many, many years. 
at unprecedented amounts. And this investment in infrastructure is what makes Gartner uh, rate AWS as a cloud leader for so many consecutive years running. Now I want to talk about some really popular workloads that customers deploy on LightSail. What are customers doing with these tools that we built? Well, first, they're building simple web pages. They're building home pages. They're building portfolios. They're building photo blogs. They're building resumes. Um, they're building all sorts of cool stuff. And then we can also see that so some customers are outgrowing just a simple website, and they're deploying things like forums, or they're deploying things like, um, uh, again, I mentioned photo blogs, but they can deploy applications like React applications and Django applications and PHP applications. Um, and then we see there that there are some uh, customers who use this thing as a lightweight dev and test environment because of how quick and easy uh, these environments take to spin up um, and, the, and the great performance and the bundle networking. It's a perfect set of tools for building experimental dev and test environments. So that brings us to today. Uh, hopefully, you now understand why we built LightSail. You now understand how customers took the tools we built and innovated with them. But over the last year, we've been really listening to customer feedback and we've been really innovating and building the features that we think are going to take them to the next level. And the first of these features is the CDN. Uh, I kind of spoiled this earlier, but I want to give you a much closer look at this. So again, really quick, CDN stands for Content Distribution Network. And the CDN is able to take static web content and cache it closer to the customer so that, for example, if your web server is halfway across the world, the customer does not need to wait for your web server from all the way over there to respond just to render the web page. It can take the cached content from just up the street, and it can render that instead for a much better user experience. But enough talking. I'm going to switch over to the CDN demo where you can see exactly what it's like to use the LightSail CDN. In order to show you the difference that a CDN can make, I've created two WordPress blogs and I've deployed them in our Singapore region. This is the WordPress blog without a CDN in front of it. And when I hit refresh on this browser, I just recently cleared the browser cache. So when I hit refresh on this browser, this request is going to go straight to the virtual private server instance. Let's see what happens. Hopefully you caught that. That image took a noticeable delay to fully load. I'm going to clear the browser cache again, and we're going to watch this web page load via the network inspector. You can see these images in the middle, these network requests, each took somewhere on around two seconds. And these are some pretty reasonably sized images, uh, 500k, 400k. So these aren't huge images, but pretty reasonable for what I would expect on a photo blog. Now let's take a look at what happens when I put a CDN in front of this. And again, I'm going to clear the browser cache. And then when I load it, I'm going to watch the network inspector. OK, so much faster. You can see that these images are loading somewhere around, five, in somewhere around 500 milliseconds, three to, four times fa uh, three to four times faster than without the CDN. And so that's one of the main benefits of using a CDN, is that you get much better site performance for your users. But there are two other really big benefits that are worth calling out. The first is that if your website is mostly static content, a CDN can actually keep your site up and running even if your origin experiences an outage, because it ca it's cached everything. Few of the network requests need to hit the origin at all. And the second reason is up here, if you see in the URL bar here, this is now HTTPS. And it's got my custom domain in front of it. And if you click through here, you can see that this certificate is generated by uh, Amazon. And this SSL certificate, this site, this whole domain is being terminated uh, at the CDN. And this is going to create a more secure experience for users uh, that access your website. And in fact, there are a lot of features that simply won't work unless you have SSL. So let me show you how easy it is to put a CDN in front of your WordPress blog, website, what have you. I'm going to flip over into the LightSail console. And then within LightSail console, I'm going to click on networking. And then I'm going to click create distribution here on the right. Now, I'm going to come in here and drop down and choose my region. And then once I choose my region, I'm going to choose my origin. And the origin is where the CDN goes if it gets a cache miss. 
I'm going to choose the instance that did not have the CDN attached to it, and I need to create a static IP address for this. So. Now it's asking me if I want to use the WordPress cache behavior preset. And because this is a WordPress blog, yes, I do want to use this preset. Now what this preset does is it recognized that I launched this instance by using the WordPress blueprint. And as a result, it can use a caching policy that understands the different routes for WordPress content. And it knows, for example, some of those routes contain static content and it will aggressively cache static content, but other routes contain dynamic content. And this is the best policy, for example, to make sure that when you make an edit to your WordPress blog text, that that text is not unnecessarily cached. And here you can see that we could have chosen other caching policies here, or we could have chosen custom settings and made tweaks to, to uh, fit our use case. Now, as I scroll down, you can see that we can choose a distribution plan. I'm gonna stick with the 50 gigs a month, which is free for the first year. Quite generous, I think. And I'm gonna give my distribution a name and click Create Distribution. And now the last thing I want to show you is custom domains. So you saw that I connected the rzdemo.com custom domain and I had an SSL certificate issued for it. I just want to walk you through how this works. I've already issued this for one of my blogs, so I'm not going to be able to do it again, but what you would do here is first you would go and register the domain somewhere, maybe in, in Route 53 or on GoDaddy, and once you have your domain set up, you would then come in here and click Create Certificate. You would type in your primary domain, you would type in the certificate name, this is basically just the domain name that you want to use here. And then what this is going to do is use one of our services called Amazon Certificate Manager, ACM. And what ACM will do is generate a set of CNAME records that you then add to your zone configuration. And that will prove that you actually own this domain. Now, once ACM acknowledges that those records exist, it then trusts that you own the domain and it'll generate the certificate for you. Once it generates the certificate, you're gonna come back in here and then you can click enable custom domain. It's that easy. Now, once the domain is configured, there are a couple of other steps that you need to go through to configure your WordPress instance to work with HTTPS. And those steps are listed in this doc here. So make sure to check out this doc once you follow those steps if you want to add a CDN in front of your WordPress blog. Anyway, I hope that you have a really clear idea now of what it's like to deploy a CDN on LightSail, and I hope you see the benefits as well. All right, that was the LightSail CDN. The next demo I want to show you is the LightSail container service. And what we realized is when we talk to customers, a lot of new customers are coming to us and asking, how do I run a containerized application? Uh, containerized applications have a variety of benefits, uh, including scaling, including monitoring, including uh, observability. And we listen to that customer feedback and we built the LightSail container service. Now, uh, what this means is that you can basically take fairly simple container infrastructure and deploy to LightSail and have it up and running within minutes. And, and that is a huge benefit to those who might be uh, who might not be ready for you know something uh, more fully featured uh, something that like Kubernetes for example. Uh, in contrast, this is a much simpler service. Uh, not a lot of prerequisite knowledge to get started with this, and I'll show you just how simple it is in this demo. Here we go. In order to demonstrate light cell containers in action, we're going to deploy a very simple application. This application is written in PHP. Here's the index.php file, and you can see that this file parses out two environment variables, client and Redis. Client is just a client identifier, but Redis is used later on down here on line 26, where we use it to find the address of the Redis service, and then here's the Redis default port. We have these two button handlers right here, and they respectively increment and decrement the counter, sorry, increment the counter, and then display the value from the counter, and then print it out onto the web page. All in all, an extremely simple application. Let's take a quick look at the Docker file. Again, very minimal, just pulling in some dependencies so that we can call into Redis. In the interest of time, I've already built this image and pushed it to public Docker Hub so that it's ready for us to pull into the LightSail container service. 
Now I'm going to flip over into the light sail console and here we're going to click on containers. And the first thing we're going to do, remember our application really consists of two services, our PHP application and our Redis application. And we're going to deploy the Redis application first. And the way to do this is you come in here and you click create service. And here I'm going to click setup deployment. And you can see that Redis is already one of the baked in deployments. So I'm just going to give this, call this container name one Redis one. And I don't actually want Redis to be publicly exposed. So I'm just not going to configure any public endpoints. And then I click create container service. After a few minutes, our deployment is active and we're ready to move on to deploying the PHP application. Now I'm going to come back into containers and create a new service. I'm going to set up a deployment and this time I'm going to choose custom deployment. And the image is where I enter the image uh, that identifies my application on Docker Hub. So I'm using my repository here and I've called it WN demo and I've tagged it with V1. The tag is very important unless you have properly uh, ensured that you're using the latest tag. Now remember those environment variables that we had in the application? We have to set those here because the application is going to look for those. And without setting them, it's not going to work. And we remember the first one that we need to set is called Redis. And here we're going to use a naming convention within light cell containers. Any service that you deploy, any container service you deploy can be addressed locally within the same region by providing the service name and then dot service dot local. And what this does is allows service to service communication without exposure to the public internet. I'm going to add a second environment variable. Just give the client a name. And then I need to open port 80 because this is a web application and we want to be able to test that functionality that we just built. And now below, after you say that the containers are going to open port 80, we have to map um, port 80 for the service onto port 80 of the container. And once that's done, I'm going to give my service a name and then again, click create container service. And now our deployment is complete. You can click open log here if uh, you want to see what the output was during the deployment. But I'm just going to show you the application now. You can see that we've created a default domain here. And if you click this, it'll take us to port 80 where we're going to be hitting the PHP application. Now again, the PHP application, we have two buttons here. We can increment the counter. So I click this three times and then if I click show counter value, I get three. That state is being persisted in Redis, and you can see here that the environment variable redis1.service.local is what we're using to connect to the Redis service. And Redis is never exposed on the public internet at all. So there you have it. Uh, really just a few minutes and you're up and running with a application talking to a microservice. Uh, both of them are containerized and both of them can be scaled horizontally. You can scale out your fleet um, as demand necessitates. So hopefully that gives you a great idea of what it's like to use light cell containers. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed those demos. Um, now, let me recap. We covered a lot here. Uh, we talked about the genesis of the light cell product. We talked about some of the workloads that we see customers running on light cell. And then we covered two major feature launches uh, with the LightSail CDN and the LightSail Container Service. Now, I hope you have a good idea of the kinds of problems that LightSail can solve for you. I'd love for you to try it out, and I hope you have a great rest of your reInvent.